Welcome to Everything Football. Who are the best differential for this year's World Cup fantasy? So I will be talking about three and um, covering them in detail, but I'll also mention two others in between um, as bonus um, options. So without wasting any time, let's get straight into it. So I have picked Memphis Depay as the first option. Now at the moment or at the time of recording, he's actually... Um, said he is fit. A couple of days ago, his manager, um, Louis van Gaal, said he's not yet ready and may not play in the first game against Senegal, but he's actually declared himself fit for that first game. So if he ends up playing, he will definitely be a good option. But um, this is not just for that one match day. This is for the guys who could help you all the way until the quarterfinals. So um, he is currently selected by eight point eight um, by 5.7%, sorry. And it's going to cost you 8.5 million as a forward. Now, obviously, I do expect a lot of people to ignore him because a lot of um, people are going for Messi, Neymar, all the big boys, Mbappe, Benzema. So there's literally no um, space for Depay if you want um to look at it like that, but he's a massive differential, only owned by 5.7%. That Netherlands group um, playing against um, Qatar, playing against Ecuador and Senegal, um, we are all expecting them to finish top of the table, or at least many people are expecting them to finish top of the table. And if you take a look at his stats, um, in the last um, 22 games, he's only blanked four times, which means he's returned 18 games out of 22. And in the last 20 games, he's managed two plus goals in a match on five different occasions in the last 20 games and um he always takes the penalties as well when he's, he's on the pitch as well and uh being the like the vr will be used at the world cup and everything there will be chances um, of getting penalties and all and i usually expect more penalties to be given in the international competitions more than um in the premier league and in the la liga i feel like the referees uh will not be lenient at all any silly fouls any handballs i think that they will give um penalties now even if he doesn't play in the first game the second match the third match they will be up against the easy opponents in the group Ecuador and Qatar and um in since 2021 Depay has scored 21 goals and contributed 11 assists like that is just crazy and it's not like some people will say he only scores against the smaller teams blah 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 but no those two goals that I mentioned that he scored he scored uh twice against Belgium. He also scored twice against Scotland. So he's not just scoring against the smaller teams. He can definitely return against the bigger teams as well. And um, even if he doesn't play in the first game, and then let's say Netherlands don't do really well against Senegal, you would expect him to come back in the second and third game. And as I said, as of now, he's just declared himself fit and ready to start um, the World Cup. So that will be an interesting um, option for sure. 5.7% is quite low. The second option is Robert Lewandowski. He's going to cost you 10 million as a forward and he's currently selected by only 5%. Just like Depay, obviously a lot of people will be going for the Argentinian um, strikers, the French strikers, the Brazilian strikers, and um, ignoring um, such players um, who are always scoring goals. Now, Robert Lewandowski has um, crazy stats as well, just like Depay. If you take a look at the last 10 games, he scored three goals and contributed four assists. And if you add five games on top of that and make it the last 15 games, he has 10 goals and contributed six assists. And it's not just against... Um, uh, no, not so good teams. Uh, people would say the teams that are not so good. No, he's contributed those um, against Belgium, against Wales, against England, teams that are in the World Cup as well. So Lewandowski for Poland, th this is would, would be an ideal option. If you're planning to play your 12th man chip on the second match day, Poland are going to play Saudi Arabia on that match day. So let's say you don't want him for match day one and match day three against Mexico and against Argentina and you just want him for Saudi Arabia. You can definitely um, play your 12th man chip and um, bring in Lewandowski for match day two. That is uh, one place you can use um, Lewandowski. He obviously takes penalties just like Depay. And uh, in the last 10 games, people would say um, Poland don't score a lot of goals. I've seen a couple of um, people saying that. Uh, not, they don't they're not score a lot of goals. But in the last 10 games, they've scored in eight of those games. They've only failed to score twice. And one of those games was against a, a good team like Netherlands. So I definitely do expect Lewandowski to at least chip in even if, if they don't go through and they finish third or fourth in their group, in the group stage, I'd not be surprised if he gets like two or three goals and maybe an assist or something. So Lewandowski is always a good option. He loves scoring and uh, we know him. We know how good, how well he does. Whenever it comes to goal scoring, you cannot mess around with Robert, uh, with Robert Lewandowski. Robert is definitely not called Robert. He's definitely called Robert Lewandowski. 10 million is going to, um, he's only selected by 5%. 
Um, the third and final option before I go to the bonus ones, I'm going to uh, mention Hoybier. And uh, he's, he's a 6.5 million midfielder and is currently selected by only 2.8%. Now, Hoybier is a very interesting player. Every time I look at Tottenham's games, Denmark's games, he always finds a way to chip in with goals and assists. Now, as I said, he's currently owned by only 2.8%. Obviously, they have a tough group, a tough game against France in their group, but they will be playing against Australia and Tunisia in match day one and three. And he's one of those players that will be um, massive in terms of tackles and key passes. They are awarding points for midfielders who can pick up key passes and also um, make tackles. Hoibe is one of those players who can do both. Like this season alone um, at Tottenham, he's really done so, so well. Three goals and two assists in the Premier League this season. And he's also got a goal in the Champions League, the goal that basically... Um, secured top spot for them in the Champions League um, Champions League group. He also has three attacking returns in the World Cup qualifiers and at the last Euros, he got three assists last year. So those are crazy numbers for someone who plays almost as a defensive midfielder. He can get you tackles as well and key passes. Let's imagine he gets like um, two key passes in a game and maybe makes those three tackles and also manage, manages to get an assist or something. You're looking at seven, eight points from Hoibi and up against Australia, up against um, Tunisia. I'd not be surprised if he chips in with that. So Hoibi is my third option in terms of differentials. Now, as promised, I said I'm going to talk about two bonus options. One of them is Robert Lewandowski's um, teammate, and that is the Alinsky. The reason I definitely like him as an option the way he's been doing for napoli this season one of the reasons why napoli is comfortably top of the table in Serie A, and his his average two key passes per game so if he gets those two key passes in every single game you're going to get those extra returns and if if you feel like Lewandowski is too expensive you can definitely go for zielinski and the other bonus option is um lotaro martinez of um, argentina they just played the friendly against uae they won the game five nil lotaro martinez did not um start in that game i don't even think he came on they started with messi um di maria and um julian alvarez but lotaro martinez when fit you'd expect him to start is also a very good option in terms of in terms of playing your tough man cheap whether it's match day one or two or whatever you want but definitely a very good option is currently selected by only 7.4 percent that game against saudi arabia i would expect a lot of goals so if he definitely starts in that game it would be a very good option more videos will be linked on the end screen so make sure to check them out i already talked about the best budget defenders um for the world cup fantasy and also talked about my my first draft my second draft i will be doing a team selection later this week thank you for watching